Manchester United nil, Arsenal won, and the United Twins need to speak about it. United, United. The biggest thing I ask myself is what was I expecting from this game? After Monday's disaster class against Crystal Palace, expectations were low and rightly so. Right. That is just the result of this season and how it's impacted me. My, my mental capacity at this moment of time. I can't fake reactions and feelings of joy. I come back every week. I don't need to show off my documentations to, to show your support FC. I'll leave it at that though. I think both of us, being Arsenal and United, had bright moments. However, if you guys tuned into the preview, I did say there were a few mistakes between a couple of people in that Arsenal background. Now, it may have not been those guys, but still, there were jittery moments in the beginning of the game. And, you know, those little back passes that were short or misplaced led to small moments of hope. Overall, they, they got away with those mishaps. And that also became a theme for Manchester United that will be revealed real soon. And I'm sure if everybody watched the game, they already know what that theme is or what. The goal we conceded, the only goal of the game, when you look back at it in hindsight, was extremely disappointing, but probably to be expected, given the nature at which it came about and the errors that led to Leandro Trossard firing Arsenal into the lead from close range. I think, I think the glaring issue with that goal was Casemiro. He tries to create a short option on the right-hand side. Onana decides to go long and gives it straight back to Arsenal with his goal kick. And, and that's another side quest conversation. You opt to play out of the back and then you want to knock it long and give it back to Arsenal, give it back to the opposition anyway. Our distribution, to me at least, from what I saw, what I paid attention to, what my eyes believe was extremely poor today. Yeah. But I digress. Ben White knocks it, knocks a ball up, up the line to Kai Havertz. You could see that Casemiro was just jogging back into position, thus keeping Havertz on side. And from there, he can fully take advantage of the 1v1 to deliver a low cross for his Belgian teammate. As always, it's the minor details that are miscalculated in the most crucial of moments. I have to touch on another thing during that first half in which we had majority possession. I believe eight shots on goal, but most of those weren't clear cut chances. I think all of them may have not been on target. Constantly, opportunities to operate and be dangerous in wide areas, especially because I believe Arsenal did a good job of staying compact and keeping central areas really difficult to operate in. Less time, essentially. Out wide, however, when the ball is relatively moving slow, where is the off-ball movement? Just shifting the ball from player to player while they stay in a predictable position is making the job easier for Arsenal or anybody we come up against. How do you expect to create spaces and, and angles to move or pass into without that? Without the movement, the dynam dynamism? Think about it. Maybe when players have to run into open space, sure, it's much easier to ride the momentum of that pass. But ultimately, the very best experience high levels of innovation when they're challenged and can counter. They see the spaces others can't, and we just don't have those characters at all. Even when fully fit, possibly, possibly Bruno Fernandes. Mm -hmm. But I believe to a certain extent that his creativity is stifled by our systematic issues that don't showcase cohesion in each third of the football pitch. The number of chances that were missed today. In the first half, I thought both wingers shine bright. Ahmad took full advantage, by the way, of being given an opportunity, which in my humble opinion, should have been given, should have been granted quite a while back. Sure. Sure. Second half, he faded a little and he explained after the game that a little knock may have affected him and that led to his eventual substitution. Fair play. I hope he's going to be fit enough for Newcastle because he should be starting in that game on Wednesday as well. Now, 
Garnacho in the second half was being funneled so many transitional chances to run at Arsenal's defence. And that theme Sia mentioned at the very beginning. Time and time again, the final ball was absolutely dire. Sometimes it didn't even reach the point of delivery. And on the occasion when it was, guess what? Nobody was present in those areas to convert or at least test David Raya. These are the reasons why I question the coaching and the quality of the collection of players we have in terms of being a unit, being a team. All season long, things have been, they've looked disjointed and we've spoken about needing to become a better attacking team. Defensively, we've fallen off for a few reasons. The midfield has remained wide open Every time we turn over the ball and in possession, our attackers are probably the most inconsistent of those in the top 10. In, the, in terms of understanding each other, playing to everyone's strengths and of course, production, which is the most important thing. ACM, yo, I'll tell you what was a massive positive of the day and the most important fixture of the day was Manchester United women in the FA Women's Cup final. Handling in business and spectacularly defeating Spurs 4-0 to secure the trophy first and foremost. And then a 2-1 to go. Two from Lucia Garcia and Rachel Williams head up secure the victory. And this has been a very tough season, especially in the WSL. Where when you think about uh, competing in the Champions League qualifiers for the first time, not being able to reach the next stages, tough results in the league, ultimately regressing in comparison to last season. We've lost many quality players over the last few years, it feels, due to mismanagement. And these are things that ultimately need to change under new leadership. Hopefully they do, because after winning a first major honour, it's time to kick on like we should have last season. The standards are high for this team, for good reason. And those players out there deserve that. They deserve winning after everything they've been through. Just a massive congratulations to everybody involved. It's time to celebrate and, and redemption as well. We cannot forget the redemption arc after last year reaching the FA Women's Cup. Facing off against Chelsea and narrowly being defeated. It was heartbreak. And to not just win the competition, come back a year later and win the competition. But also to knock out the team that defeated us in the final in the semi. Victory is sweet. Victory right here is sweet. So clap it up, people. Clap it up. Hold on. J j hold on a second, Kathy. Yeah. You're basically going to see me say I'm wrapping up once again, right? But I just wanted to mention it because it was absolutely astonishing. Just seeing the visuals itself towards the end of the game. Rain, thunderstorm, all of that stuff. Old Trafford. Rain is pouring down, and of course, you see the visuals. I uh, look on social after the game. I'm seeing compilations of water falling through the roof, fans getting drenched, literally parts of the stand almost flooding out of OT. I, I've seen videos of the opposition, the away dressing room, rain just falling through the ceiling there. I mean, to me, it's absolutely disgraceful to see how much opposition fans ridicule Old Trafford. The, the, the great Old Trafford, the once, like, like once upon a time, Old Trafford was one of the most modern stadiums in England. So to see literally so many stadiums pass it by, Everton will be moving into theirs next season. We've got the London Stadium, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, Emirates, of course, that obviously has been here since the 2000s, but still hangs up there with one of the best out there. So many stadiums passing up Old Trafford, which number one is un unacceptable within itself. But when you think about health and safety and all of these things, it, it seems like people are batting a blind eye towards that as well. Because, I mean, this stuff just cannot be sustainable and it cannot be safe as well. So, man, the it, 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 it Glazer ownership, man. It, it, this is the true negative, right, about this entire Ineos situation. It's the fact that the Glazers 
are still there. They still were there and they can still affect what is going on on the day-to-day runnings at Manchester United. You know, and, and, and that's why I'm 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 staying a little sceptical, wait and see. A lot of fans as well that I've spoke to, wait and see, they're a little sceptical sceptical because as long as the glazers exist, there's always that person. You know, when you're playing tug and war and and there's always that stronger group that are pulling you, pulling you, uh, trying your best. You're using each and every ounce of strength you have in that body. And still, you're getting dragged to the opposite side. And eventually, you cross the line. Well, it seems like Manchester United have been crossing the line too many times over the last decade. And it's a culmination of the things and the collection that this club, with the neglect, the neglection is a word, the neglect. This club has received for decades, years and years on end. And I mean, that's only a small example of what is going on, what has been going on at this club. So I'm housekeeping towards the end of this episode, first and foremost. If you haven't read it already, make sure you go and check out my little match report over at cm22ent.co.uk. After every match, if I'm not doing a watch along here, I'll most likely be posting an article. So make sure you go and check that out. I'll leave the link in the description. Of course, you've got a busy next few days, a busy week. Newcastle on Wednesday, 8 p.m. And of course, the final Premier League game of the season against Brighton on Sunday. All Premier League games being played on Sunday, I believe the 19th of May, that you can expect Two United Twins reactions to that and extra content potentially if time is permitted. FA Cup final after those things, but I'm not looking too far ahead. We'll see what happens yeah. during these next two games. Obviously, Newcastle are one p- position. I keep on confusing this. Hold on. Chelsea are one position above us. Newcastle are above Chelsea you go. in the table. Then it's Spurs. Then it's Aston Villa. I made I made this mistake during the preview. I'm not going to make that mistake again. <laughs> After reading it about 10,000 times, the Premier League table, that is. But yeah, Newcastle, one of the teams above us, looking to secure that uh, Europa League spot, which it looks like they, they should be on their way to do to do that. Of course, Chelsea are three points above us now, I believe, and they have the, the better goal difference too. It's going to be difficult for us to shake our way out of eight spot if Chelsea keep their form up. Same with Newcastle too. So we'll have to see what happens, ladies and gentlemen, on socials. Make sure you go and follow us. CM22ENT on X. On TikTok, you'll be seeing content that was shorts released over on TikTok. And of course, interacting with the community football, even wrestling from time to time. Different little things over on X. So make sure you go and check it out, formerly known as Twitter. And ladies and gentlemen, if you reach the end of this video, you enjoyed the United Twins and what we had to say about the game. Make sure you hit a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Share to your friends and frenemies. Open for better day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. We'll see you lot soon. Bitch.